Good morning. It's cold outside, uh, and I hope you all are safe at home and warm. Uh, we're doing everything virtual today, and uh, we're going to just be kicking things off with a song that is, uh, you know, coincidentally perfect. It's Soul on Fire. And on this day, I just hope that we all, our souls are on fire inside with our families, with with the people we care about, and if we're not, that we're calling or, you know, on, on Zoom with them or anything like that, uh, and that we spend today loving each other and loving God. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am so on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire, Lord, restore the joy I had, and I have wandered, bring me back, in this darkness lead me through, until all I see is you, God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I I'm so on fire, Lord. I'm longing for Your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, let me burn for You again. Let me return to You. Again. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day, when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire. Amen. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our worship service this morning on this very cold Valentine's Day. We hope that God is blessing you as you are staying in and keeping warm. We're so sorry that we're not able to worship in person today, but we are blessed to be able to use technology to worship together online. We hope that everyone will download a copy of their bulletin, which also includes our worship today, but also um, our prayer list and be praying for those who are who are on that list together. We do want to lift up a couple of announcements. The first one is, is that we do plan to have in-person and online Ash Wednesday service available. Depends on how the weather uh, holds up or what it looks like on Wednesday, but that is our plan right now. I'll let you know if there is any other change to that. Um, but that's going to be Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, the second announcement we have is that we have our food pantry um, this week from 11 to 1 on Saturday. I'm so thankful for everybody who has been helping organize that and put that together. We were blessed this week uh, by our scout troop who did their scouting for food and raised over 300 uh, pounds of food uh, this week. I know our Cub Scouts will be doing that 
later on in the year. And we're just so thankful for their support and their help and their partnership with that ministry. So Food Pantry on Saturday begins at 11. And we need some help uh, with that. So if you can help uh, hand out food on Saturday, please let me know. Our last announcement is on Saturday, we also have a drive through wedding shower for Nikki Thomas and Brandon Harlow. Uh, Nikki is our worker, our nursery coordinator, and we're so thankful for her. We, we want to celebrate that, and so we will have a drive through uh, wedding shower. It'll be on the sign that's facing the baseball park. You can come by at any time to greet them and, and uh, celebrate uh, their wedding. Uh, and so we want to lift that up also. Those are all of the announcements that I have this morning. But I do want to invite us to bow our heads as we pray and continue in this time of worship. Let's pray. Holy God, God of every blessing. Lord, you are in our coming and going. You are with us in everything that we do. Lord, you love us and you care for us, and we are so thankful for it. Lord, we ask that you would help us as we worship to set aside any distractions that we might have and focus on our hearts and our minds on worshiping you this morning. And we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to My fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to me that his word my hope Secures, he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, is ransom.
Face to face with the one who gave it all for me. May all I have to show be all that mattered most. Making your great name known. Let this be my only legacy. Loving my Showing my scars and telling my story how mercy can reach you where you are. I pray the whole world is the cry of my heart is to see all the ones I See all the ones I love, loving my Jesus. Amen. Prayer is at the heart of our faith. One of the great blessings that we have is that we serve and we are created by a living God. A God who longs to be in relationship with us. And so at this time, we are invited to pray and to lift up those prayer requests that are in our hearts and our minds. There may be prayer requests that you have unspoken that are just kind of um, meditating and ruminating in your heart this morning. I just invite you. We're going to have a time of silence where you can lift those up and then we'll pray together. So let's pray.
holy and gracious God, Lord, we ask that you would be with us today, that you would continue to watch over us, that you would continue to pour your love upon us. Lord, we lift our hearts and our desires and everything that we have to you today. All that we have and all that we are, we worship you. So Lord, we bring before you our world. We bring you the conflicts that are in our world, the injustice and the oppression in whatever forms they present themselves in our world. We bring them to you. We ask for your healing. We ask for your peace. We pray for our national leaders, our president and vice president, our legislature, our Senate, our House of Representatives, Lord, our courts, Lord, we ask that you would be with them. Be with our state leaders, with our governor and with our legislature and with our courts uh, in, in, our, in our state. Lord, we ask that you would be with them. Lord, we ask that you would be with the leaders in our community. Lord, we pray for our healthcare workers around the world that are continuing to fight. Lord, we ask that you would give them strength, that you would pour out your blessing. Lord, we're thankful for the strides that have been made toward fighting this pandemic. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to, to work. And Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every church that is in our community this morning. Lord, that you would pour your blessing and your peace out on each one of them. That you would help all of us to be your hands and your feet. And Lord, that you would help us to seek out the least, the last, the lost, those who feel like nobody cares about them or that nobody sees them and help us to show love to them in your name and for your good news to be spread. And Lord, we ask for all of those on our prayer list today. Lord, we pray that you would comfort and heal and guide each prayer request that we have. And Lord, we ask all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, and I'll be reading, ver reading chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. But remember that we are in our second week of a series about love. The first week, we asked, what is love? And we looked at C.S. Lewis's book, The Four Loves, and we looked at the Greek words that are used in the New Testament to describe love. We talked about sturge, which is affection, affection for family, affection for those who you shared close and meaningful and intense experiences with. We also talked about phile, which is brotherly love. We talked about how that was actually more than just brotherly love. It was love that's chosen. It was the love and it is the love that you have for a friend, a, a deep affection, a deep bond that unites uh, a friend to a friend. We also talked about Eros, which we celebrate today on Valentine's Day. And we talked about uh, romantic love and how it was more than just um, physical attraction, that it's about being bonded together, as the Bible says, as one flesh. And then we talked about agape love which is also translated as charity. Talk about how this is the, the love that Christ has for each one of us. Remember in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We talked about in John 15, where it talks about how there's no greater love than one who would lay down his life for a friend and how Christ embodies that in our relationship with him, that he laid down his life for us. <clears throat> and so today 
we're trying to look at what does the New Testament say to us about what does this love look like? How can we demonstrate that love? How can we see it uh, in Christ's life, but how can we also see it in our own lives as in, in the relationships around us? So I invite you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, as we think about this passage, I want to invite us to think about why it was written. Arguably, this is one of Paul's most famous statements. It is used at weddings all the time, not only for Christians, but for non-Christians. Many people have heard this passage. They may not know what they have been listening to or reading, but they've seen it. But it's important for us to remember that this passage was not primarily written about Eros love. It was not written to a couple. Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. And if you've ever read uh, First and Second Corinthians, you know that Corinth was a place of deep division. There was a lot of conflict within the church. And so Paul is writing to help the Corinthians to understand um, how they can live together in unity, how they can live together in harmony. You see, Corinth had a lot going for it. It had a lot of resources. It had a lot of leadership. It had a lot of gifts. Uh, there were people that were experiencing miraculous things. But the problem was, is that people became really focused on those gifts, on those experiences, instead of the most important thing. And what Paul is saying to the Corinthians is that the most important thing that we can do is have this type of love that Christ has for us. And so this passage about love is really about how we live together in community. How do we live together as the body of Christ? And then by extension, how do we live together in community around us? Paul is talking about what does it mean to have love in the kingdom of God. And remember that the kingdom, as Dallas Willard said, is what happens when what God wills to be done is done. And so for, for this passage, it's talking about what does it mean for God's will to be done in our relationships so that we can embody the same love that Christ has for us. And so 1 Corinthians is made up of really three different sections. Our 1 Corinthians 13 is made up of three different sections. The first section, verses 1 through 3, is called a hymn to charity or a hymn to love. It extols the virtues of love to those who are reading. Verses 4 to 8a, which is what we read this morning, is about those characteristics of love. What does love look like on the ground? in relationships, in community. And then verses 8a through the end of the passage really talk about love's superiority, how it is better and greater than all of these other things, especially prophecy. Because one of the things that was going on was that those who had the gift of prophecy were being seen as more important than others, or they thought that they were more important than others in the community. And so Paul is lifting up the importance of love even more than these other things. 
And this is important to understand because in the Greek worldview, in the worldview of the Mediterranean that Paul was writing to, those things that were eternal were considered the best or the most superior. And so Paul is saying that love is the best. Love is the most important quality because it's not going to end. He even says that in the passage, love never ends. And so Paul uh, is talking about these things. It's interesting in this passage in 4 through 8a, Paul, there are, Paul gives us 16 different verbs. Seven of those verbs are what love is, and nine of those verbs are what love isn't. And so what I want to do is I want to briefly go through each one of these. And just as we do that, to think about how does this look like or how does it not look like your own relationships that you have or that I have. So the first one is, is love is patient. I believe that Paul begins with this characteristic because it's one of the ones that is very important, but it's one of the ones that I think many of us struggle with. Many times we're impatient. We want what we want. And even with those who we care about the most, and sometimes even more with those that we care about the most, sometimes it's hard to be patient. So love is patient. Love is kind. Kindness is incredibly important. Uh, kindness is also connected with patience. If we are patient with someone, we're showing kindness. It, and really, kindness is about having unmerited favor, uh, having um, grace with the person that you're in relationship with. Kindness also connects to mercy. In fact, you remember in Micah 6, 8, where it says, as seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with the Lord. Well, there are some scriptures, there are some uh, translations that actually translate love mercy as love kindness. So when we show mercy and grace to those that we care about, we're showing kindness. Love is not envious. It's not possessive. If we are envious of our own relationship, if we're envious of other people's relationships, if we're possessive of our own relationship, if the green-eyed monster of jealousy comes out in that relationship, then it's not being very loving. Love is not boastful or proud. In the same way that we are not envious or possessive of our relationship, we're not boastful about it. We can talk about how much we love our spouse. It's nice to post sweet things on Facebook or to write them a card or a letter this time of year, but we really don't want to glorify our relationship in front of others. We want it to be something that is that is private, that is something that between, um, between those that we care about, and that could be thinking about today with Valentine's Day, especially with our spouses, but that could also be, we don't want to boast in our friendships. We don't want to name drop in our friendships. We don't want to name drop in our, or be boastful about our relationships with our parents or with other people in our community, but we want to nurture those relationships. Love does not dishonor someone. So if you are in a relationship, you don't put down that other person. You build them up. You encourage them. You help them to be the best version of themselves. You don't put them down to make yourself feel better. Love is not deceitful or self-seeking. So we are not manipulative in true loving relationships. It's not about what we are doing. It's not about getting just our own needs met. It's about helping to enrich the other person. It's about being honest and authentic in our relationships with someone as we journey with them in their own authentic uh, life journey and, and help them as we can. Also, love is not easily angered. You know, this is related to patience, and sometimes I have to admit that, that I can kind of come and storm in and get upset and get angry, and that's not helpful that when we have a true loving relationship, that we seek to show kindness, we seek to show patience, all those things that we already talked about. And so we don't want to be angry easily, even in, in stressful situations. Um, love does not keep a record of wrongs. 
We've talked about this one before in other sermons, how oh, Jesus says for us to forgive not seven times, but seven times 70 or seven times 77, however we translate that. So we're not supposed to keep a record of wrongs waiting for somebody to get to that magic number to where we can say, aha, now we can cut you off. But we are called to love and forgive. Love rejoices in the truth. The same way that love is not deceitful, love rejoices in the truth. We rejoice in what is good and beautiful and, and righteous uh, in our relationships. Love always protects. We're not overbearing. We don't overwhelm or smother someone else, but we are protective. We care about the people that we are in relationship with. Love always trusts. Um, you have to trust the people that you care about. You have to trust the people that you are in relationship with. You have to be able to depend on them. Love always hopes. Even in the midst of the darkest situations, even in the midst of the worst types of events, love hopes. We are hoping for those that we care about. We're wanting the best in their lives. We're wanting the best in relationship to God in their lives. Love always perseveres. You know, it, it, the truth is it's not easy to be in relationship. Sometimes relationships can be extremely difficult. When we don't live up to this bar that we set, when we are hurtful, when we are proud, when we are not the person that we want to be, you know, when we do what we don't want to do, relationships can be difficult. But we hang in there. We hold on as much as we can. We hold on to, to, the, to the bitter end, uh, just, you know, holding tight to those relationships that God has given us, to those relationships that we care about. Love never fails. You know, the good news of the gospel is that love wins. That when all hope is lost in the darkness of the darkest places that we can be, love wins. God never fails. Jesus hasn't failed. That when we are experiencing difficulty, even death, we have this hope and this promise that death is not the final word. That Christ has overcome sin and death. And where we, where he is, we will be with him for eternity. And so we hold on to that. We also hold on to those relationships that we care about. Even if someone has passed away, even if someone has gone on to be with the saints in glory, that love remains. Paul will later on in chapter 14, verse 1, talk about following the way of love. When we follow the way of love, when we seek to embody these characteristics in 1 Corinthians 13, and we are following the way of Christ who embodied all of these with us. So what does that mean for us today? Well, I don't think it's an overstatement to say that this last year has been a struggle. Now, while some of us have not personally encountered as much struggle, all of us have been inconvenienced. All of us have gone through tough situations and for some of us, that means that we have faced really difficult situations. But in the midst of that, um, I think sometimes we've let our patience run thin. Um, I know it seems like there's just been so much more um, upheaval, violence, uh, all the stuff with the elections, uh, contentiousness, all of that. And so in the midst of that, love has been in short supply. So what I want to encourage us this morning is to embody love in our community. Embody love with those people that we care about most, and with our neighbors, and with our friends, and our co-workers, and our schoolmates, and all of that. To embody love to those around us. What if, during this Lenten season, we were to combine both the practice of the 10-second rule with this idea of embodying love, that we felt the nudge of the Holy Spirit and we sought to, to live that out in our lives, 
but then also in addition to trying to do the, the next thing that Jesus is reasonably calling us to do and doing it in 10 seconds, we also have this love that God calls us to so that both our actions and our attitudes were in alignment with Jesus. Sometimes we have to do one before we can do the other. Sometimes our actions have to have to come out of a sense of value and, and hope for the emotions to come later, but try to live that in our own lives. For instance, in his book, uh, in another book he wrote, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis said this, Do not waste your time bothering whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you did. As soon as we do this, we find one of the great secrets. When you are behaving as if you love someone, you will presently come to love them. If you injure someone you dislike, you will find yourself disliking them more. If you do him a good turn, you will find yourself disliking him less. By combining loving hearts, loving attitudes, and loving action, we begin to follow the way of love that Jesus taught us to do. That anyone who would follow after him take up our cross and follow him. Sometimes carrying our cross means that we live out that call of love when we don't feel like it, when it's hard, when it's difficult, when we need that perseverance that Paul is talking about. But I hope we will. I hope we will use this time over these next few weeks uh, into Easter to do both of those things, to embody love in action and love in our attitudes. We do this all through Christ. We can't do it ourselves. It has to be the Holy Spirit working within us. And I pray that we will invite the Holy Spirit to do this work of grace in our lives. I invite you to bow your heads with me. Holy and gracious God, Lord, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we ask that you would move in our hearts and our lives. Lord, help us to embody grace and embody mercy, kindness and love and perseverance in all the ways that you call us to. We thank you for our brother Paul, who you inspired to write these words. Lord, we ask that, you, that we can live them out along with the call to do the next right thing that you are nudging us to do it and do it quickly in the next 10 seconds. And Lord, we give you grace. We, 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 give, we lean on your grace and we ask that you would just watch over us and we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your deep love for us. We ask all of this in Christ's holy name. Amen. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your been so so Don't deserve it. 
You have been so, so good to me When I felt no one You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me And all the old No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing that with me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you I won't tear down coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no be a day of loving our neighbor because love is selfless love is kind God, love is doing more for others than we're doing for ourselves and God in a way that's selfish because when we're doing when we're pursuing you by serving others God that makes us joyful that makes us happy that makes us gracious it makes us more like you. So God, I pray that you allow us to surround ourselves with love. I praise you now and always. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.